Hello guys welcome back to our YouTube channel. In this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto got harem with Hinata, Fem Kyubi and Tsunade. Part 3. If you want more awesome fan fiction like this don't forget to hit that subscribe button, so without wasting any time let's get into the video. The remaining crowd watched as Tsunade walked over to Naruto, now face down in the grass, and grabbed his collar with her right hand. She dragged him to the side in front of the now much smaller crowd, with an ear-to-ear -ear smile, and carefully tossed Naruto just hard enough for him to land completely outside the training ground. Tsunade stood there a moment, hands on her hips as she looked at the three Kanoichi. I win. Tsunade said very casually, her smile never dropped even the slightest. Shizune sighed and slowly shook her head as if to say, I can't believe you just did that. Tsunade gave Shizune a playful nod and looked into their eyes, Tsunade could tell that though standing, only Shizune was still in full control. Tsunade couldn't tell exactly what was going on in Sakura's mind, but she had a very good idea. Normally Sakura would freeze up and inner Sakura would be standing in her mindscape yelling, that wasn't the case this time, as Sakura finally regained enough composure to notice this. Flat on her back, spread eagle, twitching slightly out of reflex, two very obvious tents in her dress from the sheer sexual excitement of what she'd seen was inner Sakura. If inner Sakura fainted because she saw Tsunade Sensei's freeze, why didn't I as inner Sakura really me? Sakura thought. Kurenai, as Tsunade could tell, only stood from force of will. Shizune walked up to Tsunade, her face serious except for a subtle playful smirk on her lips. There was a look in Shizune's eyes only Rasunade understood and knew what was about to happen. Shizune grabbed her shirt just above her exposed huge freests and pulled her face close. Tsunade reacted like a little girl who just got caught by her mother doing something she shouldn't be. You perverted little bis, how could you do that to poor Naruto? Shizune said in a very dominant voice. Tsunade flinched submissively. I know we're all having fun here, but damn it Tsunade look what you did to everyone, not just Naruto. Did you really have to flash your tonking tits at him? Shizune almost yelled. You are such a slut sometimes Tsunade. Kurenai fainted. I can't believe you're the Hokage. Shizune yelled in Tsunade's face. Tsunade lowered her head in submission. But Shizune-chan. Tsunade said meekly. I just. I don't want to hear it you overdeveloped bis. Shizune interrupted. You're lucky I respect you so much, or what I'd do to you would make what happened to you and Eno in there look playful. Tsunade nodded in submission, she knew Shizune could do it. Now you're going to help me wake everyone up, and then you're going to explain the situation, and we'll enjoy the rest of the party, with our clothes on, then everyone will get a good night's sleep and tomorrow everything gets back to normal, understand? Shizune said in a calm, but dominant voice. Tsunade looked at Shizune. Hi, Shizune, but you did enjoy the match, admitted. Shizune smiled and kissed Tsunade on her right cheek. I did, you old slut. Shizune said playfully before she released Tsunade, who laughed. Shizune then noticed that Kurenai fainted. Oops. Help me Sakura, we're going to need her to get this done as soon as we can. I'll start waking the other women up, we'll need their help when the guys start waking up. And Tsunade. Though easy on Naruto, he's seen quite enough already today. Shizune said in a serious but playful way. They bugged like best friends, everything forgiven. Sakura had never been so confused in her life. Shizune's loyalty to Tsunade was absolute, Sakura knew that better than most having spent the last three years being personally trained by Tsunade, but to see her sensei, the legendary Sanin and fifth Hokage, the strongest Kanoichi Sakura had ever seen in her life, so easily submit to Shizune like. Well, like a slave submits to her mistress, was confusing to say the very least. Tsunade had an inner strength Sakura had only seen in two other people in her life. Tsunade walked over to Sakura. Tsunade sensei, why did you Sakura said. Sakura. Tsunade interrupted. There are some things you don't need to know and this is one of them, so please don't ask. Tsunade told her calmly, then Sakura saw a sadness filled Tsunade that was beyond anything she thought was even possible. I'll only say this one Sakura. Tsunade looked into Sakura's eyes. Some debts can never be repaid not even with your life. Sakura's mind was suddenly crystal clear, the sparring matches pushed aside, even inner Sakura was solemn. What happened between Tsunade and Shizune, that so bad Tsunade would let Shizune dominate her like that? Whatever debt Tsunade owes Shizune that she can never repay, I don't think I want to know about. Sakura thought. Hi, Tsunade-sama. Sakura bowed. Tsunade knew Sakura wouldn't ask again. Tsunade's playful smile returned. Come on Sakura, help me wake everyone up, we can't leave them laid out to get sunburned, can we? Sakura giggled, pushed the two conversations she'd just heard to the back of her mind, so what she felt didn't show on her face. 
She glanced at Kurinai and got a subtle she doesn't know look from Tsunade. It only took about 7 minutes to get all the women up, Tsunade had a very brief private chat with Kurine about the small part of Shizune's scolding she'd heard. Sakura figured correctly that Tsunade had basically told Kurinai she was never to mention it to anyone. Most of the men were easy to wake, the two hardest were Naruto and Jiraiya. Naruto had been the closest and gotten the best look at Tsunade's legendary giant priests, and with him being full of the fires of youth as Rock Lee and Guy loved to say, his brain had just overloaded and shut down. Jiraiya had fainted for a similar reason, and although Tsunade found him very annoying most times and thought he was the biggest pervert she'd ever met in her life. For various reasons even she didn't understand she liked her old teammate and respected him and even thought his perverted antics were funny sometimes, she'd never tell him that of course. She was relieved when she checked his vitals and found his pulse steady, if a little strong. She knew he loved her and had been trying since they were teenagers to get her in bed or at least see her nude, all of which had failed. She'd indirectly granted one of his greatest wishes when she'd flashed Naruto and had seen the look on his face before he fainted, glad she hadn't killed him by doing it. He was a major pain in her face, but she didn't want him dead. Hurt and embarrassed yes, but not dead. I probably got soft in my old age, but if he straightened up and acted like a gentleman, he could get me in bed once at least, at our age, we don't have many good years left. Tsunade thought. With everyone finally awake, Tsunade made her announcement. I know everyone is surprised at what happened. Tsunade said firmly before her face changed to a familiar cold stare. As you're all shinobi I will not say this again. The details of what happened here you will keep to yourself. They didn't think it was possible, but Tsunade's face seemed get even more threatening. Do you all understand? Tsunade said. Everyone nodded in unison, the intent everyone felt coming off Tsunade very clear. Tsunade's face returned to her playful smile. With that settled, let's go back inside, we have a few things to do still. Tsunade cracked her knuckles and gave Naruto a very playful smile that made him really nervous, and everyone knew why. Everyone headed back to the house, Tsunade and Shizune stayed behind a moment. As soon as everyone was out of earshot, Shizune turned to Tsunade, not worried, but something obviously on her mind. Tsunade I didn't. It's okay Shizune. Tsunade interrupted. You were right. You know I love you like the sister I never had, and you're also my best friend and occasionally my conscience. Shizune smirked and a small giggle escaped her lips. We both know what my life would be like if I didn't have you with me Shizune, you never have to apologize to me for anything. If you need to beat some sense into me or my huge freeze to straighten me out, you're allowed to and you know why. Tsunade said seriously. Shizune's face showed extreme sadness for just an instant. I know, but I could have been a little more subtle about it in front of Sakura and Kurinai. I took care of it Shizune, trust me. Besides, it's not really a secret that you're my conscience, everyone knows I'm not the most responsible person around, so give an old slut a break okay. You know if you keep this up you'll turn into a wrinkled old lady before you're 30. Tsunade grinned and gave Shizune a quick friendly kiss. Shizune giggled and nodded, 30 was only 2 years away. Thank you Tsunade-sama. Come on, I'll even get you a bottle of sake, they have a very impressive collection. I'll even have some. Unless Samiting Big comes up you can take tomorrow off, I'll even join you. We'll go shopping or something. Shizune hugged Tsunade, then headed back to the house. Tsunade made a big production out of it just to make him sweat, but the spanking she gave Naruto was three swats on the butt just hard enough to sting. He was still embarrassed though, which got a big laugh from everyone, especially from Sasuke. Everyone had been very amazed earlier that day that Sasuke actually smiled and laughed like a normal person. Many people excitedly talked about the new Sasuke all day. The women, and a few girls in particular loved his new attitude. He was still moody and stood in his brooding pose, even when he talked, but it was obvious to everyone that knew the old Sasuke that he'd loosened up a lot. Nobody would call him easygoing, but he was a lot friendlier when he talked about jutsu, sparring, and even Naruto who everyone knew he still had a rivalry with, though more friendly than it used to be. He'd ask Naruto to train him at the compound, even admitted he'd fallen behind everyone because of his lust for easy power, most of which he didn't have anymore. That surprised a lot of people, also impressed at how much he'd matured emotionally. He honestly wanted to build up his own power and separate himself from the old Ichiha arrogance and rebuild them as a clan the village could respect. He scowled when he said it, but he agreed with Itachi's opinion of the former Ichiha clan. What only two people there knew however, was that before he'd left the hospital, not only did Sasuke swear he'd never use the Manjiku Sharingan again, but he wasn't going to rely on the Sharingan like he used to. He'd only activated it twice that day in fact, at the end of Hanabi's match and during Naruto's match with Tsunade, because he didn't want to miss anything in a match of that level, it was too rare. 
He'd memorized their jutsu with his Sharingan, he didn't want to it happened automatically, but he didn't have the chakra needed to use them. As things wound down, Hiashi, Hanabi and Konohamaru came in about 30 minutes after they did, many people got to do things they'd wanted to all day. The Ashi asked Naruto about the special seal on the main gate, which Naruto would be happy to share, he just had to find the scroll or book it was in. Every o capable of it put some chakra into Naruto's new sand clone reflection as he called it. Naruto had to ask Gara if Shukaku had seen or heard what happened after they'd fainted, and was shocked, not to mention rather amused, when Gara finally told him Shukaku had also fainted. He was embarrassed to admit it, through Gara, to the former QB vessel, that a mere human female had made Shukaku faint, even if it was the San and Tsunade. For once Shukaku was glad to be sealed up in Gara. over the years Shukaku had come to admire human females. And took some comfort in the fact that it had been defeated. By one of the few humans they respected. Shukaku would also be teased mercilessly by QB when they eventually met again, but being mocked by your superiors was common, and as the weakest among the tailed demons was used to it. I wonder if I should have Gara tell Naruto what really happened to QB. No, why spoil the old fox's surprise? Shukaku thought and smiled cruelly. Is something wrong Shukaku? Gara thought to his guest. No Gara, everything's fine. Shukaku replied. Sasuke wasn't the only person that waited for a private moment with Naruto, and to him they seemed to come in waves. First was Tamari who asked him, or more accurately she begged him to teach her the air cannon barrage jutsu he'd used, she told him flat out that she was impressed, and Tamari was not someone that gave out praise easily. She didn't wait for his answer she said she'd do anything for him if he'd teach it to her, even be my first. She then pressed her very large chest against his and gave him a smile that had only one meaning. Although honored and terrified, Naruto turned down her gift as politely as he could, she was his friend and he'd teach her because she'd asked, she hadn't let him get a word in until then. Naruto had matured a lot that day and not by choice, he could accept everything he'd seen that day and get stronger or collapse under the weight of everything he'd experienced. He knew what he had to do in the next six months he had no choice but to adapt to the new experiences and learn from them. He even made a mental note to borrow some of Kakashi Sensei's Ichi Ichi Paradise books. He knew what women looked like, but he'd need special training if he was going to be as good a husband as he was a ninja, and his options were limited to either those little books or experience, and he knew he wasn't quite ready for that yet. Besides. Since he realized he loved Hinata, and their wedding would happen, and he wanted her to be his first too, as he knew she was virtually untouched because she'd saved herself for him. One thing he'd never do is hurt Hinata's feelings, especially about something as important to her as that. Damari saw Naruto glance at Hinata when he politely refused her special offer and understood. After she thanked him and was about to walk away, she silently cursed herself she'd forgotten about Hinata. Tamari didn't have many female friends, and to do that to one of her few female friends, especially one as kind as Hinata, was beyond unforgivable. She quietly asked Naruto to forgive her and to please not tell Hinata her stupid mistake. She didn't tell him, but she finally had a good life and friends that loved her for who she was, not just her big priests, she'd kill herself if she ruined that. He smiled and nodded. The next wave to crash into Naruto was Pink, his longtime friend, teammate and former crush Sakura-chan. Before she even said a word he knew what she wanted to talk about. He knew a little of what she wanted, but he told her, after she got out a few questions one after the other, that only Tsunade could answer her questions, and directed Sakura to her sensei, which she did right away. That wasn't too bad. Oh no, no 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 no, I thought she forgot. Naruto thought, his moment of peace didn't last. Can I talk to you in private Naruto-kun? A sweet female voice said. Naruto sighed. Hi, Tenten. Naruto said. He knew what was coming, but he also knew Tenten wasn't as subtle as Tamari, nor did she have the self-control when she got really excited. She was fine in battle, but in many ways she was still a little kid. This is gonna be tricky. Naruto thought as he was led to the empty bedroom. Her childish perkiness was part of her charm though, it's what endeared Tenten to her friends. Naruto went in first, stood there no more than 10 seconds, and faced a far wall away from Tenten and the door which he heard very quietly and carefully locked. When he turned to ask Tenten not to do what she'd whispered to him after she got a birthday gift he froze, he was too late. Tenten stood there naked from the waist up. Do you like? You're the first to see them. Naruto tried to answer, but couldn't. Except for Hanabi who wasn't even a genin yet, Tenten was his smallest female friend. At a petite 5 feet 2 inches she was only an inch taller than he was in the academy, but he was shocked her freests were bigger than he thought. She wasn't quite as big as Eno, but on her small frame her firm, almost round freests were very impressive. A n. 36 d cup, her brown areola were 3 inches across, smaller than what he'd seen on other girls' freests, her hard nipples were thick and stuck out a full 2 inches. 
After about 20 seconds had gone by with no answer, Naruto saw her face had changed to worry, even a little fear, and from her glances at herself, he could tell she'd started to think he thought her extremely long nipples were ugly, or even possibly disgusting. They're beautiful Tenten. Naruto blurted out his first thought. But you know we can't. Silence, then Tenten blushed. Oh I know Naruto-kun, I wouldn't do that to Hinata-chan, I know she loves you, but you do need to have several wives I'd be honored if you'd keep me in mind after Hinata-chan. Tenten bowed. There are several cute boys I'd be happy to marry, but you're the best, and I've always wanted to be part of a strong, noble clan. Naruto was a little stunned, he didn't know she felt that way about him. I have many skills that would help you as a shinobi and as Hokage. Tenten said proudly. Naruto knew she was right, though not from a clan like Hinata, her skill in both using and making weapons, especially her father who was one of the best weaponsmiths he'd ever met, would be a big asset to his clan, as well as the village, if given the resources he could provide. After I marry Hinata-chan, I would be honored to give your name as one of my other wives, but. Tenten smiled big a moment until he said but. I will have to discuss it with Hinata-chan before I ask anyone else to join my family, I'm sure Hinata-chan would approve, you're one of her friends. Naruto said. Tenten smiled. I need to tell you Tenten, you aren't the first to ask. Now, um would you please put your dress back on? Naruto said, his blush finally showed on his face. Hi Naruto-sama. Tenten said, disappointed she hadn't acted fast enough. Tenten, you don't have to call me what's that on your chest Tenten. Naruto said curiously. Tenten looked at Naruto confused. What are you talking about? She looked down at her chest, oh I've always had that, it's a birthmark. Forgetting for a moment that she was topless, Naruto walked up and took a closer look. It was on the upper slope of her left freest above her heart, but it was the shape that was amazing. Are you sure it's a birthmark and not a tattoo Tenten, it looks like out of reflex, Naruto reached up and traced it with his right index finger, totally forgetting for a moment where on her body it was. Tenten let out a short shriek of excitement, then fainted. Luckily Naruto caught her, but when he realized he'd just touched her naked freest he almost fainted. He carried her across the room and put her on the bed. Several things flashed through his mind, some were quite embarrassing, but he needed to do it, it was going to happen eventually. He quickly picked up her dress, covered her with it, and went back out into the main hall to the one person he trusted in this situation. I need to talk to you Tsunade. Tsunade saw the hidden emotions on his face and knew he was serious, she excused herself and followed him back to the room. When she walked in she saw Tenten just as she sat up on the bed, her dress slid off her bare chest onto her legs. She wanted to question him, but held herself back, she knew Naruto wouldn't do anything to dishonor himself or anyone he cared about. It didn't help that she'd heard what Tenten said to him earlier, so she had an idea of what happened. Tsunade-sama. Tenten shrieked in embarrassment, yanked her dress up in front of her chest as her face turned bright red. I can explain Tsunade-sama, I was just, uh, I mean I. Tenten calmed down, it's okay. Tsunade told the scared girl before she had a heart attack. I heard what you told him earlier, and I know neither of you would do something dishonorable. Inside Tsunade laughed hysterically as both squirmed. So besides Tenten fainting, why did you bring me in here Naruto? Tsunade asked him calmly, but firmly. Well, she has this mark on her Naruto blushed. Uh, I leave the room and let Tenten show you, I shouldn't be here. Naruto bowed to both and left the room. Tsunade turned to her newly accepted student, looked at her curiously, but seriously, and crossed her arms over her chest. From what I see I assume this mark is on one of your priests. Tenten nodded. Okay Tenten, drop the dress, stand up and show me. Tsunade calmly commanded. Tenten nodded, dropped her dress beside her on the bed, still red-faced, and got off the bed. She stopped briefly when Tsunade giggled. I thought so I saw your reaction to Minato's katana earlier. You really should wear something to cover those very impressive nipples Tenten. Tsunade said. Tenten's face got a lot redder and she swayed like she was about to faint. Tsunade's eyebrows raised as this reaction set off alarms in her brain. You're bisexual aren't you Tenten? Tenten's face instantly changed to total shock. WW what do you Tenten stuttered out very Hinata-like. Tsunade smirked. How long have you been in love with me Tenten? Tsunade interrupted. Tenten snapped to attention. Tsunade-sama I. Tenten. Tsunade interrupted, her face stern. Don't lie to me. Tenten slumped in defeat, she'd been caught and there was no escape. I've idolized you since I first read about you in the academy, but the first time I saw you Tsunade-sama I Tenten said meekly and fidgeted very nervously. I got. Tsunade sighed, she knew what Tenten tried to say. It's okay Tenten, really, I'm not offended. Tsunade smiled slyly. I'm 53 years old and have been around the world many times, do you really think I'd never made love to another woman Tenten? 
The young Kinoichi's head shot up and she stared at her idol, unsure how to react to the news though her now steel hard nipples sent a different message. That made Tsunade smile a little more slyly, and she licked her lips too subtly for Tenten to notice. We can discuss that tomorrow when you come to the Hokage compound to start your new training, but right now, let's see that mark on your freest that made Naruto take me away from my sake. Outside. In the large open field between the house and training grounds 1 and 2, was Shino, behind him to his right were the rest of teammate, Kiba and Hinata, behind him to his left was his sensei, Kurinai, in his right hand a large scroll. Many others watched, but they all did so from the house, Kurinai had insisted that they do this as teammate first. Everyone ready Kurinai said and waited for their nods. Go ahead Shino. Shino nodded, opened the scroll and laid it on the ground. He did a series of hand signs, then bit his right thumb, dropped to one knee and slapped the ground with his right hand. Summon. There was a big puff of smoke, and when it cleared, stood a bright green beetle as large as Akamaru, with the kanji for field on its back and brown. Who summoned me? Speak now or be devoured. The giant beetle said fiercely. I summoned you great beetle. Shino said respectfully, and bowed. My name is Shino. Aburami. The huge beetle interrupted him, politely. So it's true, a member of the Aburami clan has signed our contract. It gave Shino a small bow. It's my honor to be summoned by a member of such a respected clan. My name is Unarama. Kurinai stepped forward and bowed respectfully, she'd met many Suman creatures and knew the protocol in such first meetings. I am Kurinai Yuuhi, leader of teammate and sensei of Shino Aburami, Kiba Inuzuka, his partner Akamaru, and Hinata Hyuga. We are honored to meet you Unarama-sama. They all bowed and noticed Unaranma's reaction to Kiba and Akamaru, it's not threatening in any way, but the huge beetle did seem to get a little tense. The dog user is your teammate. Unaranma said. Shino nodded. Kiba and Akamaru got nervous. Do you trust him with your life? Unaranma said. Kiba and Akamaru really got worried now, the last thing they wanted to do is offend the new summon clan of their teammate. Kiba and Akamaru watched Shino and the giant beetle intently. Shino nodded without hesitation. Kiba and Akamaru focused on Unaranma for his reaction. Then so do I. Now if you'll excuse me I must inform my queen of this. He vanished in a puff of smoke. There were a few more people that wanted to ask Naruto something, many wanted favors, all of which Naruto granted, it was nothing he couldn't spare. There was one repeat favor however that caught Naruto so off guard he almost fell over. The Ashi asked him to make the first move with Hinata and ask her out on a date, he said that if they were to be married, they should get to know each other better within limits of course, he politely asked Naruto to wait for their wedding night. Before you truly get to know my daughter. The Ashi had been as polite as he could, and although he knew he couldn't stop them from being intimate, he had Naruto promise to wait because he knew Naruto never broke a promise, though he didn't know Naruto had done that already. It was the only trait of Naruto's he'd admired even when he hated Naruto all those years. He'd promised to do something, and regardless of the risk or difficulty he'd find a way to do it. As if Naruto wasn't embarrassed enough, he asked if Naruto knew if his demon features would be passed on to fire children. Naruto eventually managed to say that he didn't know and would ask Tsunade. When they finally came out, Tenten had the biggest smile on her face anyone had ever seen, then watched her literally hop across the room and hug her father so tight he almost fell over from lack of air. Tenten was asked many times by practically everyone, but all she said was that she had a surprise for everyone, and she'd show them when it was ready. Tsunade didn't say anything either, but she did have a short private talk with Ureya, which raised his eyebrows and made him smile knowingly at Tenten, which everyone saw, but only Tenten herself understood. Everyone finally went home about 6 o'clock, except for Tayuya who Naruto had given a guest room. Before she left Tsunade had a private talk with the busty Redeed and very clearly explained to Tayuya what she'd personally do to the young Kinoichi if she betrayed Naruto's trust in her. Tsunade doubted Tayuya would do anything, but she'd laid it out for Tayuya just in case. Tsunade wasn't going to take a chance, she'd die if something happened to Naruto, she'd sworn she would never lose anyone she cared about again, even if it cost her life, and had taken a special precaution years ago just in case. Afterward they helped the new staff clean up, though they tried to stop him, Naruto and Tayuya finally finished and were in their own beds by 8 o'clock, worn out from the day's activities. As they left the Namikaze compound, Kurinai pulled Anko aside and waited a moment so they were alone. Anko, come to my place, we need to talk. Sure Kurinai. This was nothing new to Anko, they'd often stayed up late talking or celebrating something. What Anko did notice however, was how Kurinai had asked her. And there was something else that only Anko would pick up on, Kurinai had a very subtle undertone in her voice Anko had never heard before, but what bothered her was that it didn't set off any of her mental alarms, like when Kurinai tried to surprise her or hide something from her. My birthday is months away so that's not it, it's not Naruto we covered that already what are you up to Kurinai? 
Bang Ko thought as she followed her friend to her house in the special part of town where most of the Jounin lived, there were no civilians in this four-block residential area. They finally arrived at Kurinai's home, a lovely, but modest, two-bedroom house with a spacious backyard, and entered. Kurinai turned on the lights and headed to her bedroom. Fix some tea for us Anko. Only if you have some dango I can heat up, I haven't eaten since lunch. Anko said. Gurunai laughed, stopped in front of her bedroom door. I stocked up yesterday. There's some dango in the fridge I cooked this morning, just heat it up. Kurinai entered her bedroom and closed the door. Kurinai heard Anko's happy cheers through the thick walls and smiled. Ten minutes later Kurinai came out of her bedroom and went into the kitchen where Anko sat at her small table, the pot and two cups of hot tea sat there, one in front of Anko with a plate stacked full of dango. Anko looked up, suddenly swallowed her dango and coughed as her eyebrows went up. Kurinai was in a house kimono, nothing new to Anko, but it wasn't her usual worn red kimono. It was very glossy, obviously fine silk, it went to just above her knees, was red with white trim, and had a white dragon over each of Kurinai's very full frieces. Her almost black hair hung loose around her shoulders, the light picked up the natural red highlights, and her lips were painted blood red. Anko was suddenly very nervous, which was rare for her. Uh, Kurinai. Anko, you remember what you asked me last week at the meeting? Kurinai said sweetly. Anko thought a moment then nodded. Hi. Anko's face turned pink, and her eyes got as big as saucers. Kurinai are you serious? I gave up on you years ago, I just do it to make you blush. Kurinai smiled at Anko seductively. You finally wore me down. Kurinai untied her belt and let her kimono fall open, the neckline plunged all the way down to the floor, revealed her very ample cleavage, her flat stomach from her navel down, the upper half covered by her frieces, and the neatly trimmed red-tinted black bush that crowned her prominent mound above large hairless lips. You can stay here and have dango or come to the bedroom and have me. Kurinai winked seductively, strolled back into her bedroom and swayed her hips. Anko watched her walk back into the bedroom and vanish from sight. What the tunk am I doing still here? Anko got up and ran to the bedroom door, stepped in and closed the door. Gurunai stood by the bed, the look on her face was one of pure lust, which Anko loved, but thought she'd never see directed at her. Gurunai also had a very dominant look in her eyes, Anko had never seen directed at her, and it made her nervous, but extremely aroused. Anko before you can have me, I want you stripped and on your knees at my feet. Gurunai told Anko matter off actly, as if Anko's opinion was meaningless. If you have a problem with this there's the door bis. Submit or get the tunk out of my life. Anko couldn't believe Kurinai talked down to her like this. Sexually, Anko had always been an alpha, regardless of her partner's gender, but there's something about Kurinai she can't resist. This may be a one-time thing, and Anko would literally kill herself if she blew that chance to finally make love to Kurinai, even once. Hi Mistress Kurinai. Anko said submissively as she stripped. Why does submitting to her sexually make me so hot? Anyone else would be on their knees between my legs. Anko thought, then suddenly flashed back to the meeting a week ago, specifically her breakdown in the bathroom with Kurinai, and everything fell into place. I'm safe. Anko thought. Kurinai saw her smile and felt all Anko's mental and emotional defenses do down. You finally opened your heart completely, now you're ready to be a mother Anko. Thank you Tsunade-sama. I hope she was right about you too Naruto-kun. Kurinai thought. Anko quickly stripped, tossed her clothes in the corner. Walked submissively to Kurinai and kneeled at her feet, head down. How may I serve you Mistress Kurinai? Inside, Kurinai fought with her instincts. She wasn't a virgin, but the bulk of her sexual experience was with men, sure she kissed, felt up, and been felt up by other girls as a teenager, most Kanoichi had, and she'd gone partway with a few women as part of missions, but this was new. You can do this Kurinai, stay calm, focused, and strong. Kurinai thought, opened her kimono wide, sat on the edge of the bed, spread her legs wide, reached out with her right hand, roughly grabbed a handful of Anko's purple hair, yanked her head up and stared coldly into her eyes. Out there you may be a tough bis, but in here you're my sub by slave and won't even speak without permission. Kurinai said then slapped Anko's face, she was happy when Anko nodded her head submissively. You want to lick my beep you worthless funt. Anko nodded meekly. It didn't show on her face, but she'd never been so happy in her life, submitting totally to Kurinai filled an empty place in her heart. You'll have to earn it fun now stand and spread your legs, arms at your sides. Kurinai commanded released her grip and almost lost her composure when Anko instantly obeyed. She reached out, rotly grabbed Am tugged painfully on Anko's large purple bush, but was very careful not to pull out even a single hair. Anko had several emotional triggers that were linked directly to a mountain of repressed fachotic rage, and if you hit one of those triggers, there was a 99% chance you'd be dead a moment later her bush was one of them. Kurinai mentally cursed Orochimaru's damned soul for what he'd done to Anko. 
This is mine now, and if I desire I'll rip it out by the roots, undestued. Anko looked into Kurinai's eyes a moment, let a short quiet sigh escape her lips, when she saw Kurinai had no intention of doing so, and it was part of the game, then nodded submissively. Kurinai released her hold as she lined up her leg, then gave Anko ten powerful kicks directly between her large bald beep lips. Anko yelled in pain instead of holding it in as she normally did, but didn't fall or attempt to protect herself in any way. I'm sorry Anko-chan. Kurinai thought. Did you enjoy that? Anko nodded. Kurinai gave Anko a small smile. Good girl Kurinai said then laid back on her bed. Keep that up and you may earn the right to lick my beep, you may speak when spoken to now get over here. Anko smiled and nodded. Hi, Mistress Kurinai. Anko said, crawled onto the bed on Kurinai's left side. Sunday morning, 8.58 am. Please come in to Mari-san, Tayuyu-sama is getting dressed, she'll be down shortly. Thank you Mikieru, and call me Tamari, I never like the formal stuff. Tamari said. The older woman nodded and smiled, then lead Tamari into the main hall where Naruto sat and read one of several scrolls on the coffee table in front of him. Good morning Tamari-chan. Naruto said cheerfully. Tayuya isn't a morning person is she? Tamari said. Naruto laughed and shook his head. Well she will be after we start her training. So what's on the scrolls Naruto? Tamari said. Just looking for some new jutsu, these are from the library. It'll take me years just to go through ever writing in there. Naruto said with a foxy grin, his tails waved lightly behind him. Tamari walked over and sat next to him. Mind if I have a look? Tamari asked. Nope, I can use the help. If you find a good jutsu Tamari let know. Naruto said. Tamari smiled, nodded, picked up the closest scroll and unrolled it. Five minutes later Naruto was near the end of the same scroll, while Tamari started her third of the four on the table, and had already found several useful jutsu, not only for Naruto, but several of fire friends and two new wind jutsu for herself. Is that all you two do is red scrolls? Goryeing. Tayuya said from behind them. Tamari laughed hard. Morning Tayuya sleep well. Beat the hell out of that apartment, morning cutie. Tayuya ruffled Naruto's hair and gave him a big hug from behind, her huge frieze squashed against his back and neck, which make him blush. Naruto, nobody has ever been this nice to me, and I don't know how I'll ever thank you. She pulled his head back so he looked up at her. But I'm going to find a way. She said with a sly smile, then planted a smoldering kiss on his lips. When she stood, Naruto had fainted. I think I overdid it. Tayuya said coyly. Tamari laughed. You're hopeless, you know that Tayuya. Come on, help me wake him up he's paying for your shopping trip. Damn it, I forgot. Tayuya said and mentally kicked herself. Six minutes later, after he activated his henge, Naruto left, a very buxom kinoichi on each arm. It was their idea, but he'd gotten used to this type of attention. He won't tell them, but he really loved it now. On the way to the business district they ran into Ino, who remembered why they were there and invited herself along as a fashion expert. Now being escorted by three beautiful and very buxom Kinoichi, a happy but lightly blushed Naruto, suggested they get Tayuya her weapons first, then find her clothes to complement them. All three women froze and stared at Naruto, shocked not because of what was said, but because it was Naruto that had said it and he was right. The three Kanoichi looked at each other, all realized that Naruto wasn't as naive as they thought, he'd actually just shown up to Mari, and to her great shock, the self-proclaimed fashion mistress, Ino Yamanaka. Naruto just gave them all a big foxy grin, and rubbed the back of his head. What you thought just because I wore that orange jumpsuit I didn't know anything about fashion. All three nodded. You really think I spent all those years watching everyone in this village just for pranks? I know more about this village than anybody. He glanced at Ino including their daily habits and secrets. Naruto smirked knowingly as Ino's eyes got big as saucers and her face turned red, can we go get Tayuya her things now, I have to be home by 1 o'clock, so I can help Hanabi with her new water jutsu. Ino looked in Naruto's eyes, but when she saw that he had no intention of revealing anyone's secrets, especially hers, she relaxed. I misjudged you Naruto, I'm sorry. Ino said and gave Naruto a kiss on the cheek. It's okay Ino-chan, everyone has. Naruto said. Tamari, Tayuya and Ino traded quick glances, all were very impressed and had a newfound respect for Naruto as a shinobi. He never failed to surprise. What he didn't say was that there were a handful of people who'd managed to keep their secrets hidden from him, and his one o'clock guests, Hinata and Hanabi Hyuga, were two of them, he just couldn't figure them out. Since they're going weapon shopping there's only one place in town for a shinobi or kanoichi to get the best weapons. Naruto opened the door, stepped inside, saw his favorite expert behind the counter, polishing one of two long bluish silver kunai. Hello Tenten. Naruto said. Naruto-kun. Tenten squealed happily, hopped the counter and rushed over to help them. You came to my weapon shop Naruto-kun, I'm honored. Tenten compassed herself how may I help you? 
Ah Yuya needs everything from the basics to her own weapon. Naruto said. Henton was shocked to hear Ta Yuya was weaponless. I'm paying, so give her anything she wants, no matter the cost. Naruto put his arm around Ta Yuya. No friend of mine is gonna get less than the best for her birthday. Ta Yuya looked around the shop and at Naruto, the full implication of this shopping trip finally sunk in. Ta Yuya fainted in Naruto's arms. Ta Yuya woke up slowly to a familiar and very comforting feeling against her and snuggled closer out of reflex. Isn't she just adorable, the big tough Ta Yuya snuggled on Naruto's lap like a little puppy. Tamari said playfully. Ta Yuya's eyes suddenly snapped open as she realized where she was and what she just did. She leapt off Naruto, who just smiled up at her from the bench he was on. I'm sorry Naruto I didn't mean to embarrass you like that. Ta Yuya blurted out and hoped she didn't screw up. It's okay Ta Yuya, you're allowed. He winked at her knowingly. Ta Yuya understood why he did this for her. Thank you Naruto-sama. Ta Yuya bowed to him, then smiled. But don't get used to me calling you that, got it? Ta Yuya said playfully. I'll deal with you later Tamari. Now, let's get me some weapons. Fenton, aren't you supposed to train with Tsunade? Naruto asked. Dad talked to her last night and asked if I could go in the afternoon, he needed me here this morning. But I'm glad he did because I get to help you. Dad, Naruto is here with his friends, we need a full Kinoichi Pakage, custom. Tenten yelled. A powerfully built balding older man came out of the back in old clothes and a heavy apron with forging tools in the pockets. Welcome to my shop Naruto-san, what can I get for you? Ayuya stepped forward, and although she knew him from the party yesterday, she didn't talk to him much. It's for me sir, I lost all my stuff over three years ago, and Naruto-kun is replacing it. I need a new weapon, mine was destroyed. I remember you from the party specifically that red hair and those friests, I'm old, not dead. What's your weapon kunai, shuriken, senbon, katana? Ayuya was quite nervous, this was not something she was used to. Actually, you probably can't help me it's a flute. Sorry I wasted your. He laughed hard, a deep belly laugh. Are you kidding? My dad can make anything you want. Tenton said proudly. Still laughing, he held up his hand in the I'll be right back gesture and went to the back room. A minute later he returned with four big cases, set the stack on the counter, then separated them. I don't get many requests for a musical weapon, but I like to be ready for any customer. Ta Yuya walked over to the boxes, he was behind the counter now. She looked at him with a you can't be serious expression. Then he opened the four boxes, inside each was a dozen floors of almost every size and material. Ta Yuya's jaw hit the floor, never in her life had she seen a selection of flutes this beautiful, she so blown away her mind had basically shut down, and it showed on her face. They could have stripped Ta Yuya and set her friests on fire, and she wouldn't have noticed it, so it was no surprise it took them almost five minutes to snap her out of her daze and restart her brain. I I can't these are too Ta Yuya said, extremely nervous. Ta Yuya, you're my friend, and I'm paying, so you pick the one you want, and if he doesn't have it, order a custom flute from him, but we are not leaving this shop until you have a weapon, and that's final. Naruto said with authority. Ta Yuya looked at Naruto, she knew that expression. He wasn't gonna budge on this, and she'd learned that once Naruto set his mind on something not even Tsunade could change it. Thank you Naruto-sama, this is more than I expected, but I accept your gift. Ta Yuya bowed as low as she could. I'll do my best to honor you. They were all surprised she could be so formal. Ah Yu knew how to be gracious, proper and humble, she just hated to do it because she'd grown up on the street and humble on her streets only got you dead or worse if you're a well-built girl and she developed extremely early. She was rather rusty but nobody said anything about that. Remember Naruto, I hate this formal crap so don't get used to it but for this gift you deserved something special. What I'd like to give you I can't, this is the next best thing. Ta Yu said. For two hours Ta Yuya examined every flute, she even played a few of them, everyone stopped to listen. They're all so beautiful, and the craftsmanship is amazing. There's a butt coming, I can see it on your face. The old weaponsmith said. Let me think a minute. He looked at Ta Yuya and studied her closely for a few minutes, then smiled. I think I see the problem, I know just the weapon for you. Let me guess you use Gain Jutsu, and you're a long-range fighter because of poor Tajutsu skills. Ta Yuya nodded, amazed he just read her like an open book. I thought so one moment. He stepped through the curtain into the back again, and they heard noises coming from the back. Two minutes later he returned with a small scroll in his hand. I don't have it here, but I want you to give this scroll to Tsunade-sama, she'll know what to do. Everyone is a little confused. Wait a minute you mean you have weapons in the vault at the Hokage mansion? But only the most powerful scrolls and weapons are kept there because they're forbidden. Naruto said. Not all are forbidden, just extremely rare and valuable. He said. You can't mean that flute. Tenton yelled in shock. Everyone turned to look at her. She turned red and looked at the floor. 
Sorry father. Tenten said meekly. What are you talking about? Naruto asked. Ino was about to jump in when he held up his hand to silence everyone. It's not my place to tell you, and Tenten is forbidden from talking about it without Tsunade's permission. Tsunade will explain everything if she decides to let you try to claim it. Tenten's father said. That last part got everyone's attention try to claim it, that didn't sit well with Tayuya. So, is there anything else I can get you? He asked. Well, I really like that blue flute is it glass? Tayuya asked. He smiled. Sapphire actually. The guy that sold it to me said it belonged to his wife, but she died before they had any kids, and he couldn't keep it because of the memories. He said it was a gift to her from some Hokage across the sea. It's made from a single sapphire from the bottom of the ocean. He said it had a power if you played a special song, but he didn't know it. If you want it, it's yours. Tayuya looked at Naruto, then smiled. I'll take it. Tayuya said happily. With all her weapons collected, they checked out. Tayuya almost fainted when she heard the final price, most of which was her new flute. I've never seen so many zeros in my life. Was all Tayuya said. But that done, they left to get her some clothes, and Ino knew exactly where to go, as she put it. For a Kanoichi with your special clothing needs. Ino smirked and glanced at Tayuya's chest. Everyone got a good laugh from that. Tayuya's face lit up when she saw where Ino was taking her. As soon as they walked in they were greeted by the owner. Welcome to the Iron Kimono, I'm Hadaru the owner, how may I help you today? Hello Ino, back for more clothes Naruto. She asked with a smile. Not today Hadaru-chan, this is your special customer today. The poor girl doesn't have a decent outfit to wear. Ino said and pulled Tayuya to the front. Hadaru frowned and crossed her arms over her huge chest. That simply won't do for a beautiful young Kinoichi like you. And Hadaru-chan Ino said and smirked. Naruto-kun is paying, so money is no object. Hadaru's face lit up with excitement at being able to go all out with a customer. Not for the money though, she truly enjoyed her job. Naruto looked at Ino, she could almost hear him calling her abyss, but she knew he's not really mad at her, and is just getting him back for what he said earlier about knowing her secrets. Go on girls, have fun. I'll wait here, but remember I have to be home by 1 o'clock, so you only have an hour and a half, then we have to leave. Thank you Naruto-kun. They said in unison, then all kissed him at once and followed Hadaru into the racks of clothes. I'm just too nice, but who else gets to hang around beautiful women all day and have them frown all over him I have to tell Jiraiya, he'll be so jealous. Naruto thought and smiled. Naruto sat on a chair by the door and watched Hadaru, Tamari and Ino lead Tayuya around the store. They looked at clothes and picked up several garments from each rack. Once they had an armload they disappeared into the back for 10 to 15 minutes and he'd hear a few oohs and ahs and a few other comments. This happened three times before they all returned to the counter, each had a big stack of boxes in her arms. Oh this is gonna hurt Gamachan. Naruto said. That made all four women laugh. Only a little Naruto, I'm giving you a 15% discount. Hadaru said. Thank you Hadaru-chan. Naruto said and pulled out his frog wallet. Besides, I get the feeling you'll be coming here a lot in the future. Hadaru said. Naruto swallowed nervously. Which is why your discount is permanent as a new preferred customer. Hadaru said. Naruto bowed and made several mental notes, one of which is to get all his clothes here, he could use her expertise in the future, not to mention help with what he'll be doing in the next six months. Before they left Naruto made six shadow clones and had them take all the boxes back to the compound and put them in Tayuyu's room. Once outside the Naruto clones leapt up onto the roof out of sight, disappeared in six yellow flashes of light, and reappeared in Tayuyu's room, where they sat the boxes and disappeared in puffs of smoke. Back at the shop Naruto smiled as he gained thire memories. Naruto stood by the lake, Hinata on his left, Hanabi on his right with a scroll in her right hand. He turned to the younger Hyuga sister. Are you ready to start your training Hanabi? Hi, Naruto-sensei. Hanabi said. Naruto smiled at being called sensei, he'd forgotten about that. Did you study it like I asked you to? Show me the hand signs. Hanabi put down the scroll and did the hand signs for the jutsu. Okay Hanabi, move to the edge of the water and do just what I told you. Naruto said. You can do it Hanabi, I believe in you. Hinata said and smiled at her little sister. Hanabi smiled, walked to the water's edge, faced the lake, then closed her eyes for almost two minutes. She gathered her chakra and focused her mind. When she opened her wide eyes, she was totally focused on her task, not even aware of Naruto and Hinata anymore. Naruto and Hinata both felt Hanabi's chakra was pushed to the maximum. Naruto looked at Hinata a little worried that Hanabi was going to exhaust herself on her first try. Hinata took Naruto's hand and squeezed it, concerned for her little sister, Hinata knew what this meant to Hanabi. 
Naruto was a little surprised by Hinata's gesture, but he didn't make a sound, he won't do anything to break Hanabi's concentration, he knew she put almost everything she had into this to impress him. He didn't fully realize it until everyone had left last night, but he knew Hanabi was in love with him just like Hinata. Naruto got himself ready to grab her when she collapsed. He could stop her, but wanted her to know that to put too much chakra into a single jutsu is a mistake. He was surprised she made such a mistake as a top student in her last year at the academy, and a Hyuga then realized her emotions got the better of her judgment. Anabi flashed through the hand signs as if she'd done it dozens of times, then with what could only be described as supreme confidence in her own ability, Hanabi yelled, almost at the top of her lungs, shadow in the fog, and released all her chakra into the jutsu. They stood there a moment, Naruto and Hinata were unsure what would happen. A few seconds later everything within five feet of Hanabi got foggy. It wasn't enough to block their vision, but the fog was laced with enough chakra to give Hanabi a slightly shadowy appearance. About 10 seconds later it dispersed and Hanabi fell forward exhausted. Naruto was ready and caught her within a second of her fall. When his arms wrapped around her body Naruto gasped, blushed then switched his hold to bridal style, scooped up the limp girl in his arms, then headed for the house. Before he passed Hinata they locked eyes for a moment. During that very long second Hinata saw it in his eyes, and her face went pale. He knows. Hinata thought. A few minutes later they were in Naruto's bedroom, Hinabi on the bed unconscious. Hinata stood over her and did a basic diagnostic jutsu she learned from Tsunade during her med training. She'd stopped her training after she learned the basics, mainly because she couldn't keep up with Sakura. Now she just did part-time work at the hospital to build her experience and confidence. Is she okay Hinata-chan it's chakra exhaustion isn't it? Hinata finished and nodded. I thought so. She used too much chakra, but she did the jutsu on her first try. She really impressed me. Naruto said proudly. She was unconscious, but Naruto could swear he saw Hanabi smile subtly. Hinata also smiled proudly. Naruto, Hanabi won't be able to train with you for two weeks, she has to rest until she builds her chakra reserves back up. Naruto nodded, he remembered how Kakashi Sensei was after his battle with Zabuza almost four years ago. Naruto kun, I have s something important today ask you, you Hinata stuttered badly. She stuttered, this has to be very hard for her. Naruto thought. You know our secret, don't you? Hinata said and looked down at her own, then Hanabi's chest. Naruto's jaw dropped and his eyes got bigger than you thought was possible. Our secret? Naruto said and put extra emphasis on our. Hinata's face suddenly got deathly pale as she realized her mistake. Her eyes rolled up in her head as she fainted from shock. Naruto caught her bridal style and laid her on his bead next to Hanabi. Naruto almost fainted himself, many things started to fit together like puzzle pieces in his mind. I hope she doesn't get mad, I don't know how to handle this. Naruto ran out of the room, shut the door behind him, saw nobody around, and disappeared in a flash of yellow light. Okage compound, training ground one. Okay Tenten assume the stance again and focus you chakra on Naruto what are you doing here? Tsunade yelled, surprised. I'm sorry to interrupt you. But I need your help at my house now please. Tsunade saw Naruto was very nervous about something, but it didn't feel life-threatening. This better be important Naruto. Tenten wait here and practice your form, I'll be back as soon as I can. Both bolted off at top speed, and in under a minute they were across the village and in Naruto's house, down the hallway to his bedroom. He opened the door, let Tsunade in first, then followed her in and locked the door, before he put a sound seal on the room. He didn't want to alert the staff or Tayuyu in case anyone screamed. Tsunade saw the two girls unconscious on Naruto's bed and glared at him. What the hell have you been doing here Naruto? Tsunade almost yelled. Hanabi-chan fainted from chakra exhaustion, and Hinata-chan fainted when she asked me if I knew their secret, but I think she meant to say Hanabi's secret. Naruto said quickly and nervously. Tsunade was a little confused, but she didn't have time for that and moved to Hanabi to confirm what Naruto said with her own diagnostic jutsu. She confirmed what he'd said, then circled to the other side and scanned Hinata, her pulse was still fast, but slowing down, otherwise she was fine. Okay Naruto, what's this secret you're talking about? I didn't find anything unusual about them. Um, you see when I caught Hanabi after she fainted I wrapped my arms around her, and she felt uh, I think she has Naruto said, nervous. Tsunade held up her hand to stop Naruto, then looked at the two girls a moment, focusing all her senses on them. Her eyebrows raised and she smiled big as an old memory returned. I think I know what you want to say they're just like Hana. Hana? Naruto said, not recognizing the name. I'll tell you later, right now I want you out of this room, I need to talk to them privately. Tsunade gave Naruto a hard glare. He dispelled his sound seal and left. 
Tsunade activated her own sound seal for privacy, woke Hanada, then used a special medical jutsu to transfer some of her chakra into Hanabi, so she's strong enough to sit up and talk, but she'd still need at least a week of bed rest. Tsunade was one of the few Mednin who knew this jutsu because you need huge chakra reserves to use it safely. Once both girls were awake and compassed enough to talk, Tsunade began carefully, she didn't want this to be any harder than she figured it already was. Hinata Naruto told me that you said something to him, but thought you made a mistake in how you said it. Hinata was suddenly very nervous and looked at her little sister. Hanabi Naruto-kun knows. Hanabi tensed up and blushed. When you fainted by the lake he cost you around your chest. Hanabi fell back into the pillow, mortified. Hanada, I know about the jutsu Hana used on your jackets, she finally perfected that jutsu. Tsunade said calmly and smiled warmly. Hanada and Hanabi were shocked, Hanabi sat up suddenly. Now I know why you and Hanabi never took those jackets off and avoided getting wet. How old were you when it started Hanada? Tsunade said calmly but seriously. I don't Hanada froze at the look in Tsunade's eyes. It was five months before Hanabi was born. Hanada said sadly. A tear rolled down Hanabi's cheeks at the reminder her mother died soon after she was born. Show me. Tsunade said. Both girls looked at her shocked. I, I can't I'm Hanada said and stuttered badly. I'll make it easier. Tsunade said then removed her green coat, then her gray shirt, it fell to the floor behind her, her huge wreaths dropped from their weight and settled just below the crotch of her dark blue pants. Hanada and Hanabi gasped. Hanada had seen Tsunade's wreaths once before, in her match with Naruto, but that was from a distance. Hanabi was very shocked and blushed bright red, she'd only seen Hanada before. I didn't plan to show you Hanabi, but under the circumstances I don't see any other way to do this. You have my promise I won't tell anyone, but I do need you to tell me if anyone knows. Tsunade said. Nobody knows Tsunade-sama, except Naruto-kun he doesn't know everything, he just figured it out from when we hugged him and when he caught Hanabi. We weren't careful like we should have been. Hinata said. Both girls looked down at the bed, ashamed of themselves. I'll go first Hanabi. Hinata said, got off the bed and unzipped her jacket. Hinata opened her jacket and revealed the black shirt beneath it. Hinata's shirt was stuffed, shoulder to shoulder and from her waist almost up to her collar. I know Hinata looked down at the floor. I'm a freak. Tsunade sighed loudly, closed her eyes and pinched the bridge of her nose with her fingers. That explains it now I see why you and Hanabi act like you do. I thought you were just really shy. You're both ashamed of your body because you think there's something wrong with you. They looked at her stunned, they didn't expect this. Hanada, Hanabi, I know it's very unusual to develop freaks as early as you did you started about the same age Hanabi. I wish Hana was still alive, she could have helped you both so much, she went through the same thing, and so did I take off your shirt Hanada, you too Hanabi. Downstairs Naruto sat on the couch, looked over at his gift from Gara every two seconds, and had a serious battle in his mind as to whether or not he should use it to see what they're doing. He wouldn't hear anything, but it would show him what they're doing. I can't, it wouldn't be right. But I already know so it's not spying. We'll be married by my 16th birthday so arg. Naruto put his head in his hands, he had a headache from all the turmoil. He didn't know how long he sat there, head in hand, not moving a muscle. Thank you for not using it to spy on us Naruto-kun. A kind female voice said. Naruto's head whipped around faster than even Tsunade could follow. Behind the couch was Hinata, who just spoke to him. Hanabi and Tsunade behind her. Is everything okay? Oh, that Naruto glanced over at the block on the mantel. I didn't use it to look, I just couldn't do that to you Hinata-chan, and especially not to my first student, Hanabi-chan. Naruto said. That was very grown up Naruto, I'm really proud of you. Tsunade said proudly. Thank you Tsunade. Are you okay Hanabi, how can you even walk, you exhausted your chakra when you did that jutsu earlier. Naruto asked. I really did it Naruto sensei. Hanabi asked excitedly. Naruto nodded and smiled at her proudly. Careful Hanabi, you aren't strong enough for this yet, try to stay calm. Tsunade said. Hanabi took a few breaths and calmed down. Naruto, you know Hinata loves you, I'm going to ask you this once, and I want a yes or no answer got it. Will you officially become her boyfriend and date her, I don't want any secrets if you're going to be married by your birthday. Before you answer I want to tell you I know how boys your age are, if you do anything inappropriate to Hinata. Tsunade leaned in close, her face turned stone cold. Regardless of my feelings for you, half demon or not, you'll be the last Namikaze, got it. Tsunade said emitinlessly. Dot. Naruto nodded instantly as his face paled. Tsunade's face returned to normal. So are you two officially a couple? Naruto looked at a very hopeful Hinata. Hanabi was just as hopeful for her sister. Naruto took a few deep breaths to calm down, then smiled. Hi. 
with an ear-piercing shriek of joy Hinata dove over the back of the couch, tackled Naruto and fell onto the floor between the couch and coffee table, landed on top of him and smothered him in kisses. This continued for a full minute before the smiling crowd snapped out of their daze and rescued Naruto. Once they stood again, Tsunade turned to Hinata. Are you sure about this Hinata okay, go ahead. Before Naruto could ask what she meant Hinata grabbed his arm and walked him to the stairs, they stopped at the top. What the foo heck is going on out here? Tayuya said annoyed. Naruto-kun is my boyfriend now. Hinata said happily and smiled ear to ear. Congratulations. Tayuya screamed happily and hugged them both at once. If you'll excuse us Tayuya-chan I have something special for Naruto-kun. Hinata said coyly. Ayuyu watched them head down the hall, then jumped down to the first floor and went over to Tsunade and Hanabi. Are they gonna tie you? said and winked. Tsunade shook her head. I didn't think so. So what's she gonna give him she can't do here? Tayuya said confused. Hanabi giggled, turned away and covered her red face. Ayuyu looked down at the younger girl, her dark blue hair hung halfway down her back and waved as she giggled wildly. Talk Hanabi, what's Hanada gonna do? Tayuya asked. Hanabi turned and looked up at the older Ritid, she had to, Tayuya was a full head taller than her. She's going show Naruto-kun her boobies. Hanabi said and blushed bright red. Tayuya turned and looked at Tsunade for confirmation. Hanada the shyest girl I've ever met in my life is going show Naruto her tea priests. Tsunade smirked and nodded. Damn the girl has more guts than I thought. Tayuya said impressed. You have no idea. Tsunade said knowingly. Tayuya looked at Tsunade confused. It was a moment of silence before it happened. Hanada chan. Naruto's scream echoed throughout the mansion. Everyone turned to look upstairs. He forgot the damn sound seal. Tsunade thought. You two stay here. Tsunade commanded, then ran across the room, jumped the stairs to the second floor, and disappeared down the hall in three seconds. Damn, she's fast for her age. Tayuya said, impressed. Hanada has a nice pair, but she's Sino's size at best. Even if it's the first time he saw her, she doesn't look that special to me. She heard giggling, looked down, and got really confused at what she saw. Hanabi looked up at her with like she didn't know what was talking about. Am I missing something? Tayuya thought, more confused. About three minutes later Tsunade and Hinata returned, both smiled, they could barely hold in their laughter. So what happened? Tayuya asked. I was too much for Naruto-kun. Hinata said playfully. Don't ask Tayuya, you'll find out eventually. Tsunade said. Ayuyu just nodded, confused as hell. Hanada, would you carry me home, I couldn't make it myself. Hanabi said. Hanada nodded and smiled. Tsunade helped Hanabi onto Hanada's back. Naruto will be down in a little while, don't ask him about what happened, he can't tell you. I'm gonna escort them home before I return to the Hokage compound. If you need me for anything Naruto can reach me in an instant, but only if there's an emergency. Tsunade said. Ayuyu nodded. There's something I need to give you Tsunade-sama. Tayuya ran to her room, returned a few seconds later, and handed Tsunade a small scroll, this is from Tenten's father, he said it's about some weapon you have in the vault, some special flute. Tsunade took the scroll, a little surprise showed on her face. I look into this and inform you of my decision. Tayuya nodded, not willing to risk losing a flute as powerful as this one seemed to be from the reaction she saw. Musical weapons this powerful are extremely rare, and to be given one by her newly adopted home, filled her with happiness she couldn't put into words if she tried. Tsunade then left with Hinata, Hanabi already asleep on her back. Ayuyu smiled ear to ear, then headed back to her room to finish putting her new clothes away. It only took 10 minutes for Tsunade and Hinata, who carried Hanabi on her back, to walk to the Hyuga compound. Still in a great mood, Tsunade walked back to the Hokage compound, enjoyed the weather, and greeted people as they passed her. As Tsunade reached the gate to her home, she's greeted by an Anbu guard in all black, only his eyes showed. Tsunade-sama, you have two guests waiting in the main hall. He said. Thank you, is Tenten still here? Tsunade said. Hi Tsunade-sama, she's where you left her, still practicing. He said. Have Tenten on from I'm back and that I'll join her after I tend to my guests. Tsunade said. The Anbu nodded and vanished in a swirl of leaves. This better not be business, if some stuffy politicians ruin my good mood with trivial crap I'll kill him. Tsunade said before she walked across the yard to her house. Tsunade emerged from the short hallway between the front door and the main hall, ready to go full bis on whoever dared to spoil her rare good day, and stopped mid-step, an ear-to-ear -ear smile now on her face. You've been a naughty girl Tsunichan one of them said. Did she just call me Tsunichan? Normally Tsunade would put anyone that dared call her that through the nearest wall, but for this person, she'll let it go, once. 
On the couch, a purple-haired guest sat on the lap of her other guest and snuggled close, a look of total contentment on her face Tsunade had never seen before. So I assume you two had a good time last night. I told you it would work Kurinai and Anko, I don't want to spoil the mood, but if you ever call me that again Tsunade's face turned absolutely stone cold. I'll kill you. Tsunade said in a deadly serious voice. Hi Tsunade-sama. Anko quickly said, she realized she'd hit a very sensitive spot with her playful term and started to tremble with fear. Tsunade felt the mood of the room quickly turn cold. Damn it, I did it again. Tsunade thought, then let her smile return. Sake, three cups. Tsunade yelled, she knew the staff heard her and would respond within seconds. They looked at Tsunade and could tell she wanted to say something to lighten the mood again, their smiles tried to return. By the time Tsunade reached the chair on the other side of the coffee table, a nicely built 18-year-old brunette with a waist-length ponytail walked out quickly, she carried a tray with a bottle of sake and three small cups, set it on the coffee table between the three women, bowed and left. So tell me what happened. Tsunade asked and smiled as she poured the drinks, she wanted the happy mood back. Kurinai and Anko smiled. Kurinai especially after what Tsunade had helped her arrange last night with her now even more precious Anko-chan, and that her impulsive new lover was still alive after she'd angered Tsunade with what she thought was an innocent term of affection. After they'd all down three shots, and Tsunade had heard the basic events of the two Kanoichas' first night together, a few moments explicitly detailed that made all three blush. Then Tsunade remembered her other guest. I'm afraid this'll have to wait until later, Tenten is waiting for me in the training ground. It's okay Tsunade. Anko said. It's my fault. And please accept my most humble apology for my comment earlier, I didn't know you'd react that way, I was being playful. You don't need to tell me why, I can see that nickname is very personal. If I've dishonored a special memory I submit myself to you for punishment. Anko stood and bowed as respectfully as she could. Anko had only humbled herself like this twice before, as far as Tsunade and Kurinai knew, and were surprised. It's okay Anko, I should have handled it better. If you want to know the story behind that nickname I'll tell you, I think you two deserve to know, you're the closest thing to sisters I have. Besides, if I'm right we may be a lot closer within a year anyway. They smirked at Tsunade, then bowed and left. Tsunade headed back to resume Tenten's training. Guri Chan, we'll have to warn our friends about that. Anko swallowed nervously I was lucky to get off so easy she won't do that again. I love her like an older sister, but sometimes she scares the living hell out of me. Anko said seriously. Gurunai nodded, in total adjurement with her new lover. Namikaze compound, Naruto's bedroom. Naruto sat on the end of his Hokage-size bed, still in shock from when he saw Hinata's feasts. I can't believe I never noticed they're huge, how did she hide them from everyone for so long they're bigger than Tamari's, and she's going to give herself to me once we're married. Naruto suddenly felt very light-headed and fell back onto his bed unconscious. Naruto saw nothing but darkness and felt like he was falling. He knew he was unconscious, but still aware. Suddenly there was a light and he found himself in familiar surroundings, but he hadn't seen them in over a year. Naruto's mindscape. What am I doing back in this hallway, QB is long gone. Think again kid a booming voice said. A-H-H-H-H. What are you doing here I thought you died when we fused. Naruto said. There was a very low fear laugh. Mortals I've been back about two weeks. I should have told you but I didn't want to contact you until I knew what had happened while I was gone. Naruto was shocked, but quickly regained his composure and took a dominant posture. Why didn't you tell me you'd come back a year later you stupid fox, do you know what you put me through? Naruto has been talking to QB almost five years, not counting the last year QB was dead, but even before they fused, this never happened. QB no Kitsune, the most powerful and feared of the tail demons, laid on its belly in a very submissive posture. I'm sorry Naruto. QB said in a soft, humble voice. Naruto had never heard QB talk like that before, he gasped and took a step back. In the time I was back in my spirit realm, and especially in the weeks since I returned to my cage, I've come to rescue you. QB said. Is, is this a trick QB? Naruto asked cautiously, but honestly. You respect me. But when we fused I got your memories with your power, why don't I know that already? Naruto said. Not everything I only gave you the memories you needed, if I'd given you thousands of years of memories and knowledge at once it would have overwhelmed your mind. It could have even killed you and I wouldn't do that to you. There's a reason I spoke to you now she'll give you strong kits. QP said. Naruto's eyes got big. The blue-haired female called Hinata is a worthy mate for you and will be a strong alpha for your other mates. QP said. Hold on a second oh yeah, I forgot you share my memories, but we aren't even engaged yet, I only just agreed to be her boyfriend don't get ahead of me. Naruto said. I'm sorry, but there are some things you must know if she's to be your mate. 
your kids will bear our features, and that impulse you've fecked lately is from me, you must mark her as yours. Mark her, how? And what will this mark do to her? If this hurts Hinata-chan I'll kill myself. It will not harm her, but if you wish to mate with her she must be marked or QP said. Or what QP, tell me. Naruto yelled when QP didn't continue. Or she won't survive her first birthing, and even Tsunade won't be able to save her I'm sorry, but there's no way to avoid it. Naruto dropped to the floor in front of the giant cage, very nervous and more scared than he'd ever been in his life, but not for himself. Naruto did make a sound, or even move, for over five minutes. I've looked into her heart, she wants to be a mother as much as she wants to be your mate, it would destroy her if she could never have your kids. QP said. I can't do that to Hinata-chan, tell me how to mark her and exactly what it'll do to her. Naruto said. QP smiled. What Naruto wasn't told is that Hinata wasn't the only female heart QP had looked into and seen love for Naruto. QP hated to keep secrets from Naruto, but there are many things you just can't casually tell a friend. Ayuya sat nervously on the couch as she waited for Tsunade to come in. She'd gotten the message not 30 minutes ago, raced over as fast as she could, and almost collided with Naruto on the way out. Her heart raced from excitement, she really wanted this legendary flute. Despite her past Naruto had accepted her as a friend, even thought of her as family, and let her live in his house. She'd do anything to protect him and all of her new friends no matter the cost. This meant she had to get stronger. Good morning Tayuya. Tsunade said as she walked out of the kitchen, a cup of strong coffee in her right hand. I'm not a morning person, want a cup? Tayuya smirked. No thank you Tsunade-sama, I have other ways to get going in the morning. Tayuya said and blushed, which she normally didn't do, but her new friend's habits had rubbed off on her a little. Tsunade smirked slyly. I'll remember that. Shizune has been a pain in my ass for years about it, I shouldn't drink so much sake and coffee. Tsunade said in a slightly mocking tone. I heard that Tsunade, and that's your last cup. Shizune yelled from the kitchen. Tsunade sighed and smirked. Pushy piss. Tsunade said quietly, but playfully. I heard that too. Shizune yelled. Tsunade clinched her teeth and grunted in annoyance. If I didn't love her so much I'd she means well at least. They heard Shizune laugh from the kitchen. Okay Tayuya, follow me. Tsunade said. Tayuya's face lit up. You mean hot damn ah, uh, thank you Tsunade-sama. Tayuya followed Tsunade through several long hallways, then through a hidden door she didn't think even Tsunade could knock down, then down two flights of stairs where Tsunade deactivated an elaborate security system, down a long hall and through a heavy door. Through that door was a huge room, on the far wall was a massive vault door she doubted even Naruto could could make a scratch on. Holy shit that thing is tunking huge. Tayuya said in awe. Tell me about it, I once hit this door with everything I had almost broke my hand. Tsunade said seriously. Tayuya gasped in shock. If Shizune hadn't been with me it would have taken me all day to crawl out of here. Tsunade saw Tayuya's expression. Chakra exhaustion, but let's open this thing up shall we? Tsunade walked to the massive vault door and placed her hands on it. I am Tsunade, granddaughter of the first Hokage and fifth Hokage of Konoha, the village hidden in the leaves. Grant me access to your secrets. Tsunade said. Tsunade's hands glowed, but it wasn't from her, the door itself seemed to scan her. After several seconds the glow faded and huge mechanical locks are heard as they opened. Tsunade removed her hands and stepped back. Watch this Tayuya. Tsunade said and smiled. The lower half of the door started to lower, the upper half split vertically in the center, and the halves slide open into the walls. It took a minute for the door to fully open. Once open, Tsunade looked at Tayuya and smiled, the look on her face was priceless. Impressed. Tsunade said playfully. Tayuya nodded, not even realizing she did it. I thought you would be. Follow me in, but I have to warn you, don't touch anything without my permission, the door isn't the only security, and all of it is lethal. Tsunade said very seriously. Tayu you got serious. Hi, Tsunade-sama. A few minutes later Tsunade found the section she wanted. Tsunade put her hand on the small door, it glowed a moment, then there was a small whoosh, and it popped open slightly. Tsunade opened the door and removed a three-foot-long flute made of a material that seemed to be both mineral and metal, and was the deepest black she'd ever seen. The ends, finger holes, and twelve symbols she'd never seen, all appeared to be made of the purest golden metal she's ever seen. This is a Tayuya. Tsunade held it up in her hands. Not much is known about it other than this it's at least 5,000 years old, is rumored to have been created as a gift for the only mortal to ever earn the respect of the celestial guardians. Ayuya's knees buckled, but she managed to stay standing. All I know is that before you can use it, it has to accept you as its mistress and will test you. Tsunade said. What if it doesn't find me worthy? Tayuya said nervously. It will kill you. 
Are you sure you want to do this? Tsunade said. Ayuyu closed her eyes a moment, took several deep breaths, then opened them, pure determination on her face. I will prove myself worthy, I will not betray his trust in me. Tayuya said with a resolve worthy of Tsunade. Ayuyu reached out, carefully took the flute and lifted it to her face, held to her right side just like her old flute, the mouthpiece on the side of the end by her mouth. She placed it to her lips, and with every fiber of her being started to play it, but before the first note is heard Tayuyu stopped, as if frozen in time. Tsunade watched nervously for only five seconds when she saw Tayuyu collapse. Tsunade caught her before she hit the floor and gently laid her down, her heart pounded in her chest as she reached for Tayuya's neck. She passed. Tsunade almost yelled, a huge smile on her face. She closed the safe door, picked up Tayuya and carried her out, the massive vault door closed and resealed by itself. Tayuya woke up on the couch in the main hall of the Hokage mansion. I did it Tsunade-sama I can't tell you anything though, it's part of the contract. Tayuya said. Tsunade nodded, she won't risk offending the Celestial Guardians, who she figured Tayuya had talked to during the five seconds her eyes seemed to go blank, as if her soul wasn't in her body. Thank you Tsunade Tayuya said and smiled. It's time I got home though. Tayuya said then played a few notes on the flute and vanished in a red glimmer of light. Tsunade's jaw hit the floor. Damn that was impressive. If what that scroll said is right, this village just made some very powerful allies. Good luck Tayuya, I hope he picks you I'd love you to finish what you started at the hospital. Tsunade said with a sly grin. The next two weeks were almost dreamlike for several people. Everyone at Naruto's housewarming party had been informed, to many of their great surprise, that Kurenai and Anko were now a couple, and Anko had moved in with Kurenai. Just as shocking to many was that Naruto and Hinata became a couple, known to everyone in the village. Finally settled in, Naruto trained every day at his compound, helped Tayuyu with her new jutsu, along with Tamari while she was there, joined four days later by Hinata, when Hanabi was strong enough to get around by herself again. Two days after that Hanabi started under her Naruto equal sensei, more carefully this time, Naruto and Hinata would be sure she did. Naruto and Hinata had also been on four dates already, but held hands and occasional kiss was all they did, mostly. In a rare moment of boldness late one afternoon during their third date in the Namikaze flower garden, Hinata had told Naruto. You can touch them if you want to. It would be through her shirt and jacket however, she wasn't ready for that next step yet. Naruto nearly fainted just from the offer, which he very politely declined once he'd regained his composure. To see her bare frieze was one thing to touch her bare frieze was several steps above that, and he knew he wasn't ready for that either. By the end of the second week Tayuya had the basics of her new jutsu down, then started to train on her own with her new flute. Except when Tamari was in town to help her with her jutsu and listen to Tayuya play her small blue flute she'd named Windsong because a breeze always came up when she played it. Her other flute she only showed to Naruto, Hinata, Tamari and Ino. So far anyway, as well as the only jutsu she'd learned for it, what she called her body echo. As she understood it, every location has its own feeling, which translated to a short tune. She had to be at a location to learn it, but once she had she could play the echo of that place and return there instantly. Though she only knew two echo songs as she called them, the Namikaze compound and Hokage compound. Everyone had seen the change in them once they finally started dating, and Ura made all their friends very happy. Hinata seemed to float around with a permanent smile on her face, and her family was the proudest of her, she'd finally come out of her shell, and her confidence seemed to grow every time she was with him. Both Yuga girls spent most of their free mornings and early afternoons at the Namikaze compound training with Naruto. Early in May Chaoji's 15th birthday came, which they held at Naruto's, and though there weren't as many guests it was just as extravagant, with tables full of food. Although it had been weeks since QB had returned, Naruto hadn't told anyone, he just couldn't find the right way tell anyone QB was back. There was one thing that didn't quite fit into his new happy life, at first anyway, and that was from 3 to 7 every afternoon, when Sasuke would show up for his private training from Naruto. Sasuke absolutely refused to call Naruto his sensei, though he did stop insulting him, which Naruto figured was the best Sasuke could do. Naruto couldn't resist the urge to call Sasuke his student however, which always made Sasuke's eyes twitch in annoyance, which Naruto found very funny. This routine continued through May to early June, five days before Kurenai's birthday. That would be a week nobody would ever forget. June 6, afternoon, Namikaze compound. It was their 15th date, they'd strolled around the Namikaze flower garden hand in hand, sat on the benches and kissed as only two people truly in love can, they'd exchanged flowers and placed them in each other's hair. Hinata and Naruto weren't alone in their feelings, inside Naruto QB loved Hinata as a maid as much as Naruto, and saw the true strength hidden deep within the girl's soul that was just beginning to emerge. 
and to the extreme joy of all three, within his sealed bedroom, Naruto just using his hands lovingly caressed and massaged Hinata's bare feasts for an hour. It was the happiest Hinata had been in her life up to that point, and while quite intimate, his hands only contact with her chest was as far as they'd go until their honeymoon. The reason for this next step in their relationship they'd officially announce later. Afterwards they'd enjoyed a beautiful evening picnic as the sun was setting. Before she headed home, Hinata gave Naruto a deep kiss, her heart and soul put into it, then Hinata almost literally floated across the compound and down the streets toward home, her entire being overflowed with contentment. Hinata knew only two moments in her life would ever top this her honeymoon with Naruto-kun. And the birth of her first child, which she'd looked forward to since she was little, being a mother was her oldest, most precious dream. It had been inspired by her own mother, so when the short sword pierced her chest to the hilt, thrust there by someone obviously about her age dressed head to toe in black, Hinata's mind shattered as she looked down at the hilt sticking out of her chest, all her dreams that were now so close to becoming reality were gone. N-A-R-U-T-O-O-O. Hinata screamed from the very depths of her soul before she collapsed to the ground and stared up at the newly visible stars and watched them fade away as her world turned black. I'm sorry I wasn't strong enough. Hinata said quietly as she slipped into unconsciousness, tears rolled down her cheeks, and her purple jacket turned dark as it soaked up her blood. I Hugo Bis now my father's death at the hands of your father has been avenged. The unknown assassin said coldly. Naruto's ears suddenly stood up and twitched as they picked up a very familiar voice, and his heart dropped as horror filled him at the thought that raced through his mind. The thought to use his hinge never happened, he reached out with his mind and found her chakra signature, and almost screamed as he could barely feel it. He vanished in a flash of yellow light, appeared next to Hinata, dropped to his knees in heart shredding horror at what he saw. The black clad figure stood near her body, obviously her assassin, but for the moment that barely registered in his mind. Inside Naruto's mind QB was having an identical reaction, to have finally found happiness after thousands of years, only to lose it before they'd even made it. Naruto's ears and tails drooped in horrified sadness, then they felt her chakra disappear. Hokage Mansion. Tsunade headed to bed early, tired from a long day of training with Tenten, a bottle of sake in her hand. When a wave of red chakra shattered the bottle and blew her off her feet, threw her across the room where she slammed into the wall and cracked it. If she was a normal villager she'd be dead. She was stunned, but not from the impact. She'd been there 15 years ago during the QB attack, felt its overwhelming power and unmatched killing intent what she'd just felt dwarfed at by leaps and bounds, only one thing came to her mind, and it horrified even her Naruto. Tsunade screamed, scared to her core. What are you why you're not human? The masked shinobi said, terrified. Within seconds the street around them filled with ninja and kanoichi of all ages, as well as dozens of anbu, and not a single person, had moved toward the source of the chakra wave that shattered windows all over tea village and knocked almost every non-shinobi unconscious. They saw Hinata on the ground, the hilt of a short sword stuck out of her blood-soaked chest, sat on the ground was a black-clad shinobi that, those that could see the symbol, knew was from the village hidden in the clouds, what had even the hardened Anbu afraid to act was Naruto or what was left of him. His hair was dark red, including that on his ears and tails, he was surrounded by purple flames, not chakra, but purple flames. Even worse was what stood over him and filled the street. A 50-foot QB not made of red chakra, this was the actual flesh and blood demon and felt from both was a level of chakra and intensity of rage none had ever felt before, not even during the QB battle 15 years ago. Both stared at the now very small black-clad cloud nin, with the deepest blood-red eyes you could imagine, growled with a fury that made the village shake, and it was all directed at a single person. You killed our mate, prepare for an endless nightmare of horror beyond the comprehension of any mortal. Both absolutely roared as a single being. The black-clad assassin was now terrified beyond the capacity for rational thought, except for a single repeating thought. All the years of agonizing training for this moment of revenge, the lose of a father, the only remaining relative the last conscious thought the Cloud Nin had was. It wasn't worth it, if I'd known I'm sorry. The Cloud Nin had expected to die after the Hyuga girl, even to be tortured, but this was so far beyond either of those, there was no way to prepare for this. To face a shinobi was one thing, even in a full rage, but to stare into the face of the most feared demon in the world after it told you the girl you just killed was its mate was a price to high to pay, even for revenge. Many of the shinobi and Kinoichi watched the scene were in their pajamas, but nobody cared at the moment. Anbu grabbed the cloud nin and hold him, Tayuya, Sakura, Anko, Kurinai calm Naruto down, I'll get Hinata. Tsunade screamed with all the power at her command. Everyone reacted as told, almost from reflex. Four Anbu grabbed the fear-frozen cloud nin, but didn't move otherwise for fear of gaining the wrath of the two before them. The four Kinoichi stood before Naruto QB and tried to calm them down and not get killed themselves. 
Tsunade checked Hinata with her strongest diagnostic jutsu and used all the chakra she had in a desperate attempt to find a spark of life, she knew that it was very likely her only chance to stop Naruto, who was blinded by a rage even she didn't think was possible. She pushed her senses to their absolute limit and searched for a spark of life before Naruto unleashed his rage on the world. Chess alive. Tsunade screamed and nearly collapsed from exhaustion. Everyone turned to her, especially Naruto and QB, their rage suddenly disappeared and Naruto was at Hinata's side faster than anyone present could follow. Can you save her? Naruto asked Tsunade in a voice that could only be described as demonic hope. Tears suddenly poured down Tsunade's cheeks. I can but only by giving up my own life in exchange. Please remember me and know that I love you Naruto-kun. Tsunade said so only Naruto heard her, before she flashed through hundreds of hand sands a second, her whole body starting to glow with her chakra. Mark her Naruto, it's your only chance to save them both. Do it now or you'll still lose someone you love. QB yelled in Naruto's mind. QB had heard Naruto's mental scream at the thought of losing Tsunade, even to save Hinata. I can't allow this to happen to him. QB thought, unheard by Naruto. Without another thought Naruto ripped open Hinata's shirt and jacket from the left side of her collar down to her stomach, both tore around the blade still embedded in her chest. Everyone that saw gasped as Hinata's huge left freest fell over her arm to the ground, stained by blood. Naruto opened his mouth wide and bit her neck just above where it met her shoulder. Tsunade was shocked, she didn't know why he'd done it. Naruto's tails, still covered by red fur instead of blonde, glowed red as he poured red chakra into Hinata's body. Tsunade stopped her life-sacrificing jutsu, reached for Naruto to stop him, but was slapped away like nothing by his tails. A minute later the blade slowly rose up from Hinata's chest and fell to the ground. As soon as he released the bite she inhaled sharply and sat up, terrified and wondered what happened. Hinata looked down at the closing wound on her bare freest, saw the now more demonic red-eyed Naruto, saw a 50-foot QB smile at her with the same red eyes screamed and fainted. QB vanished in a huge puff of smoke and Naruto's hair turned back to the original blonde. Naruto saw the look on everyone's face, gave a foxy grin, and rubbed the back of his head. Uh, I think I have some explaining to do. Naruto said then scooped Hinata up bridal style. Tsunade, Hiashi and Tayu you come with me. You and Buu take that cloud nin out of my sight while you still can. They flinched and nodded, all four and the prisoner disappeared. Everyone else go home tomorrow is gonna be really long. Naruto said. Turned and leapt off for his home, Hinata in his arms. Tsunade didn't know how to react to being commanded like that by Naruto, but she didn't know what else to do. You heard him, everyone go home and what you just saw did not happen. Tsunade said with unquestionable authority. Everyone nodded and left, Hiashi joined Tsunade and followed Naruto back to the Namikaze compound, both had a feeling something else was going to happen as big as what they'd just seen. Ah you you followed Tsunade and Hiashi you got back to the Namikaze compound, she'd been at Ino's house during Naruto's date. Normally she loved returning home, but tonight felt different, and not just because she'd seen her precious Naruto-kun changed into a more demonic form and summoned the QB, the power of his chakra and intensity of his rage, had horrified her. She wasn't afraid he'd kill her, though the thought had crossed her mind as she tried to calm him down, her respect for him had jumped drastically as she realized just how hard his life had been. I thought my life was hard, but Naruto's must have been I don't think I want to know what he's gone through, but I'll do anything to help him. And Hinata-chan. Where the tongue was she hiding those things? She's only 15, but she almost matches up to Tsunade. When she gets older shit we're here. Okay you big slut get your mind out of your panties, it's time to get serious. Tayu you thought as she saw the main gate. When they stopped at the gate he as she stepped up to Naruto, concerned. Naruto-san. I don't want to be disrespectful, but shouldn't we take my daughter to the hospital for proper care? The Ashi, I understand you're concerned, but please trust me when I tell you she'll be much better here. You'll understand after I explain what happened. Naruto said. The Ashi wanted to argue, but after the display of power he just witnessed, to do so would be futile and potentially fatal. As if that wasn't enough he just discovered that his daughter was more like his beloved dead wife than he'd realized, then he had another thought. Hanabi. Naruto touched the gate symbol and it opened, everyone slipped in fast so they could close it, Naruto was in his true form, luckily everyone seemed to have been knocked out by the red chakra wave and hadn't seen him. Tsunade knew that didn't matter, tomorrow was going to be very rough for her, the council, and especially the village, there was no way to avoid it now, she'd have to tell everyone, it was the only way she knew to give Naruto his life back. If she tried to cover this up the whole village would most likely panic and start a riot, directing all their hate at Naruto, as they almost had several times when he was growing up, though she hadn't seen it then, she'd seen the hate and fear in many citizens' eyes before and after Naruto's three-year mission. Then another even scarier thought rushed to the front of her mind. 
I told Naruto my true feelings for him because I thought I was about to die. Tsunade mentally screamed at herself. She couldn't hold it in and shuddered at what Naruto would say. Tsunade suddenly felt like a 15-year-old girl who'd just been caught by a boy she spied on while she touched herself. She prayed she hadn't destroyed his respect for her, or worse. Once inside the house Naruto took Hinata to his master bedroom and sat her on the bed, still unconscious. I'm sorry Hinata. Hiashi, would you leave the room please, I'll follow you in a moment. Hiashi did so immediately as he realized what Naruto was going to do. Naruto ripped open the front of Hinata's shirt and jacket and laid them on his left shoulder. Tsunade, Tayuya, take her to the bathroom and clean her up please, she can wear my pajamas, they should be big enough to cover her completely, and they'll have my scent on them so she'll feel safe. Your scent? Tsunade said, then her eyes get big as she realized what was going to happen. The bite Naruto, is she going to? Naruto carefully turned Hinata's head and showed the mate mark on her neck where he bit her. A fox head with nine tails around it like the rays of a setting sun. I had to do it before I wanted to, it was the only way to save her life and yours Tsunade-chan. We just couldn't let you sacrifice yourself even to save my fiancé. Naruto said and paused to see their shocked reactions. I asked her tonight and without a further word he gently laid Hinata back, then he left the room. Tsunade forced herself to focus on what had to be done, this was for Naruto and Hinata. Tayuya had similar feelings and pushed them aside for the moment. Tsunade carefully woke Hinata, who was disoriented for a moment, and understandably so with what she just went through. Tsunade used Hinata's love for Naruto to get her focused. Although very embarrassed at first because she was topless, most of her friends knew her secret now, so she pushed back her embarrassment and let them help her strip and shower, but respected her privacy when needed. The long hot shower relaxed Hinata and once dialed off, a lot faster than normal, with help from the almost submissive Tsunade and Tayuya, who acted as if her servants, then helped her find a nice pair of Naruto's pajamas. Hinata felt safe in them and once in his bed under the blankets was asleep in under a minute with a smile on her face. Downstairs, Naruto and Hiashi sat in the main hall, Hiashi on the couch, Naruto on a chair across from it, neither had said a word since they left Hinata. Tsunade and Tayuya finally came down the stairs and crossed the room to them. Naruto motioned for them to sit on the couch with Hiashi. Although Naruto first told them he and Hinata were engaged, even that didn't make Naruto smile. Did she see the mark on her neck? Tsunade sadly shook her head no. Does she feel okay? Naruto said. Tsunade answered, almost submissive. Naruto, Hinata handled it well. She was shaken, but once she focused on you and knew you saved her life, it gave her strength. She'll have nightmares for a while, but she'll be fine as long as she has you, and Kurenai will help her get over her nightmares. Tsunade said then shrunk into the couch. About what I said to you. It's okay Tsunade, we'll talk about it later, privately. Naruto said. Tsunade smiled at Naruto. The Ashi and Tayuyu were simply amazed by how Tsunade acted. Don't ask about it, it's between me and Tsunade. Naruto said with gentle authority. The Ashi and Tayuyu nodded to Naruto as if he was the Hokage. I think I should tell you about that mark on Hinata's neck. QB told me that because of our fusion that left me half demon, if I ever want to have children with Hinata Chan, I have to mark her as my mate. If I don't mark her, QB said she wouldn't survive the birth. I had no choice. I was going to anyway, but I wanted to tell her first, explain it to her, and let her decide. You see, when I marked Hinata as my mate, I transferred some of QB's chakra to her, that's why my bite saved her. The red chakra enhanced her healing and chakra reserve, like mine. There's more since she has demon chakra in her now, and our bodies can't normally handle it because it's too powerful, it's going to transform her like it did me. Within an hour she'll be wrapped in red chakra like I was, and she'll stay that was for about 12 to 18 hours before she'll emerge fully transformed. Naruto said. So she'll have fox features like yours. The ears, claws, teeth and tails. Tsunade said. Well hi. She'll have my ears, but her teeth and claws will be smaller because she's female. Because I had to do it to save her from a fatal wound, I gave her more chakra than I had planned on. Naruto said nervously. What do you mean Naruto-kun? Tayuya said. I think I know. She would have only had one tail, but because she was on the brink of death, he had to use extra chakra. How many tails worth did you use Naruto? Tsunade said. I used about three tails worth of chakra. So you know about the tail demons Tsunade. I don't fully understand it myself, but once Hinata's transformed she'll have two tails maybe three. QB isn't sure we gave her enough red chakra to need a third tail, we'll have to wait and see. Naruto said. There's silence for almost a minute, then came the question Naruto hoped to avoid but knew he couldn't. Naruto-san, how did you summon QB, and more importantly, it moved as you did, as if you were one being. Hiashi said. Naruto sighed deeply and slumped in his chair. 
I'm not sure how, can you wait for me to find out? The Ashi nodded. So how did I look? Naruto said. Your hair turned a deep scarlet, and your fox features became more pronounced. Longer teeth and claws, larger tails, your eyes turned blood red, and you gave off flames that were dark purple, like your chakra is now because of your fusion. Tsunade said. Was anything destroyed? Did I kill anyone? Everything is kinda fuzzy. I only remember we felt the same emotions. Naruto said. From what I saw on the way to the scene, the wave of red chakra you put off shattered windows all over the village and seemed to have knocked out everyone except the shinobi and Anbu. You scared the living hell out of someone who's currently in Anbu headquarters. Tsunade said, stood, her hands together in front of her. Please Naruto let us handle the interrogation. I know you want to do it, but I can't risk you losing control again. Sun said and bowed low. I'm begging you Naruto-sama, let us handle it. I'll keep you informed and we will find out who was behind this act of cowardice. You have my most solemn promise. Naruto tensed up, his chakra spiked briefly, but nothing he wouldn't normally do when he trained hard. Okay, I promise I'll stay out of it as long as you need me to, but if this was ordered by a village Hokage I'll destroy that village, everyone in it and anyone that tried to stop me. Naruto said. Tsunade, Hiashi and Tayuyu glanced at each other, they knew exactly what Naruto meant. Tsunade, Hiashi and Tayuya, who tensed up at the thought of Naruto personally interrogating the assassin with the power he displayed earlier that night, relaxed. I'm very happy you could save Hinata, but I was willing to give my life to save her. Even if she had D that jutsu would have brought her back. Tsunade said. I know but it was QB that told me to mark her as the only way to save Hinata-chan and you. I know you'd give your life to save someone Naruto said. No, I wouldn't. Tsunade interrupted. It was for you the thought of you going through what I did with my brother, and then Dan, I couldn't let you go through that over Hinata, I know how deeply you love her. I couldn't let you feel that kind of pain. She has her whole life ahead of her. I'm an old woman Naruto, I've had a full life, it wouldn't hurt as much to lose me. I'd do anything for you Naruto. Tsunade stood, went around the coffee table to Naruto and lifted him to his feet. I don't care who knows it I love you with all my heart Naruto-kun. The Ashi and Tayuyu gasped, then their jaws hit the floor as Tsunade wrapped her arms around Naruto and planted a sizzling kiss on his lips for a full minute, then released him. I realized out there, after I came face to face with my death, I had a moment of clarity. The only person I ever gave my heart to died and the pain nearly destroyed me. When I used my creation rebirth jutsu in my fight with Orochimaru, I shortened my life by 20, maybe 30 years. I don't have many years left and I don't want to spend them alone. I'm the last of my bloodline Naruto, when I die so does the bloodline of the first Hokage. Naruto Tsunade said then got down on one knee. After Hinata, will you mark me and give me a child? The Ashi, Tayuya and Naruto turned absolutely pale, then fainted. Naruto fell into his chair, so Tsunade sat in the other chair and thought hard about what she'd just done. She didn't regret it and meant every word, but she'd have to handle this very carefully especially with Hinata. Counselor no, she was going to be Naruto's wife, even if she had to step down as Hokage. Despite the paperwork, she'd grown to love her job, it had its perks. She knew many of the council, as a clan head and parent of many of her team's members would support her, she just hoped that it'd be enough. It was a last resort, but she would step down as Hokage if she had to. What about Tenten and Sakura? Tenten has gotten much stronger with her new Tujutsu and just got the first lightning jutsu down. And Sakura. The special training I'm giving her has greatly increased her chakra reserves, and in a month or two she'll be ready for her big test. Will they still respect me once they know? Tsunade thought and let them wake on their own, which took almost 20 minutes, during which she was deep in thought. Once they woke, everyone decided they should just get some sleep and let this all sink in, tomorrow will be rough enough on everyone, so why make it harder? Genre 7, 6.54 AM, Namikaze Mansion. In the room next to the master bedroom, Naruto suddenly sat up. She's about to wake up. Naruto said, not even five seconds after he woke up he was fully alert. He jumped out of the bed, still in his clothes from last night, went to the three other rooms, and woke them up to greet Hinata. They aren't quite as alert as Naruto, but the rush of adrenaline has them clear-headed. They all ran to Naruto's master bedroom and stood by the right side of the bed where Hinata was, wrapped up in the blackets, so only her face showed with a big smile. Hinata-chan, wake up Hinata-chan everything's okay. Naruto said. Hinata stirred at the sound of Naruto's voice. Not even awake yet she turned on her back and sat up on her elbows. Naruto-kun. Hinata said sleepily. It's me Hinata-chan, it's time to wake up. Hinata sat up, the blankets wrapped around her shoulders. They're blue. Tayuya said. Hinata opened her eyes slightly, just enough to see. What are blue Tayuya-chan? Your ears Hinata-chan. Tayuya said playfully. 
Anada reached up out of the blankets with her right hand and touched the side of her head, her eyes popped open and revealed black slit pupils with three small red lines on each side just like Naruto's, the rest was all white as before. Where's my ears? Hinata said, worried. On top of your head just like mine Hinata-chan. Naruto said then touch them. Uo Naruto-kun. Hinata said lustily then blushed. W why do I have fox ears, what happened to me? Calm down Hinata, you're okay, but the only way I could save your life was to give you some of QP's chakra, you're like me now. Naruto said. Hinata looked to Naruto, surprised. I'm like you now. Give Hinata some room come on Hinata-chan, you trust me right then get out of bed so we can see you. Naruto said warmly. Hinata reached out for Naruto's hand, saw her own and gasped in shock. Her fingers ended in short blue tinted claws like Naruto's, but more feminine. Hinata took a deep breath, exhaled slowly, nodded to Naruto who took a step back before she whipped off the blankets, literally jumped out of bed and landed without a sound. Everyone gasped, then smiled broadly. You're even more beautiful than before Hinata-chan. Naruto said and smiled as only he could. Naruto's right, you're as beautiful as your mother, I wish she could see you now. Hiyashi said. Hinata blushed. Thank you father. You're a fox Hinata, pardon the pun, and you've gotten me all excited. Tayuya said. I know Tayuya Chan, I can smell your puss, Hinata said, clapped both hands over her mouth and blushed bright red are what she almost said. Ah, you, you blushed slightly and smiled. It's okay, Hinata Chan, I guess your nose got better, and apparently that's not all they got bigger, too. Naruto realized Tayuya was right. Everyone out, we need to let Hinata adjust to her new body. Nobody had time to say anything, Naruto basically pushed them out and closed the door behind him. Inside the room, Hinata walked over to the large closet, the double doors mirrored. Hinata turned to the side and waved her tails. I have three tails like Naruto-kun's. Hinata said, smiled, reached behind her and ran her hands along her outside tails. Wow, they're so soft. Hinata said. Turned away from the mirror and stripped so she can get a good look at Harolf. When finished she put the pajamas and her blue panties, her only clothes still clean, folded neatly on the bed. Hinata closed her eyes, calmed her mind, then she felt it from deep within herself. Her normal chakra reserves had more than tripled, but her chakra capacity she couldn't even guess at she'd need a couple days to get to full strength before she tested her new limits. She could feel all the power, she'd never been so strong in her life. Without a thought she activated her Baiku again, dropped to her knees as she clutched her head and screamed when a flood of information hit her all at once, her Baiku again had changed. Are you okay Hinata-chan? Naruto yelled through the door. He felt her pain from the hallway and knew what she'd felt, but he was still concerned. Naruto hadn't mentioned the link he now had with Hinata, he'd tell her about it once she'd adjusted. Is Hinata okay? He ashy said, openly concerned. She's fine, but she activated her Baiku again and it hurt her. QB told me it might affect her Baiku again, but any pain is temporary I promise. She'll just have to relearn to use it with her other new abilities. Naruto said. New abilities? He ashy said. She has my senses now, her sight, hearing, smell, touch everything has been enhanced along with her strength, speed and chakra. Wait Naruto said then paused. I'm fine Naruto-kun I was just surprised. Hinata said loudly. They knew that was a lie, she didn't want them worried about her, she was being strong for Naruto, and they all knew it. Okay, let us know when we can come back in. Naruto said loudly to Hinata. She's still adjusting, she just needs some time. Naruto said calmly. They nodded. This was a new area, and they had no choice but to trust Naruto and QB. Inside the room Hinata had deactivated her Baiku again, and the pain faded away a moment later. Now that hurt I'll have to train again I guess, but Naruto-kun and father will help me. Hinata said, stood, turned to the mirror, and her jaw hit the floor. She hadn't noticed before, but her whole body had changed. She loved her new fox ears, her three tails were blue like her hair, but with white tips. Her tails were about three feet long, but she loved how they made her look. She even thought her new blue claws were cute. She stepped up close to look at her new eyes, which she noticed were just like Naruto's in many ways, but still mostly white like always. Beautiful. Hinata said quietly and blinked several times. Another major change she saw was her body, she'd added about 20 pounds of muscle, but it highlighted her features and made her even sexier. She had the smooth feminine muscles of an experienced Kanoichi, her blue hair was a few inches longer, hung just past her waist, but was even thicker and more lustrous. The most nauticable change, besides her ears and tails, were her freests. They were full and still hung past her waist, but were now even fuller, rounder, and had a soft firmness. What really got her attention was her skin, it was always beautiful and pale because she kept herself covered most of the time, but now her skin was absolutely flawless, pale white in color, but with a very healthy glow and softer than silk. Her huge nipples had gone from a light blue to a deep blue in color. 
Parting her frieze she looked at her flat stomach, which now showed a gentle six-pack. To her surprise, her head wasn't the only place she'd filled out, a larger patch of blue hair covered the fuller mound above her larger, but still hairless lips. I need something to wear. Hinata said, ran to the bed, slipped her panties back on, then ran to the door and almost collided with it. I got faster too. Tsunade sama, Tayuya chan, are you there? Yes, Hinata chan. Tsunade and Tayuya said together. Would you come in please, I need some help finding something to wear. Hinata said. I'll get some of my new clothes, I doubt anything of Naruto's will fit you properly. Tayuya said, dashed down the hall to her room and disappeared inside. Just a moment Hinata, for now we'll have to borrow some clothes from Tayuya. Tsunade said. Tell Tayuya I'll replace anything you have to alter to fit Hinata-chan. Naruto said. Tsunade smiled and kissed his cheek. Naruto grinned and blushed slightly. Chapter End. Alright that's it for today's video guys, let me know in the comments section how was the story, and also don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I will meet you in another video, peace out.